This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Hotels, current and future configurations. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's mid-June 2021 and we've just got access to the lovely MI 24P Hind. I've flown it just a few times and I'm already in love with it. It's so easy to fly and good fun. We are going to do a basic tutorial of how to taxi, take off, general flying and then come down and land. At this point, myself and RC are clearly not experts in this. We're going to show you the absolute basics. Most of it will be general helicopter aviation with a few things we've picked up along the way. In a few months, when we've learned this properly, all the intricacies, all the autopilots and whatnot, we'll come back and replace it with a superior video. So, I'm going to treat you guys out there like this is your first helicopter. So, it's just the best way to do it. Controls. Obviously, stick left and right does the cyclic roll. Forwards and back does the cyclic pitch. Rudder pedal does rudder pedal. The throttle lever does collective. That's the angle of attack of the rotor blades. The more collective, the more angle of attack, the more lift. Next, the more binary commands. Just for today, we're going to have brake. You can set that as an axis, but I've got it as a binary command. Parking brake. Trimmer button. Trimmer reset. Collective brake. Assign altitude lever. Those are the minimum of things that we need to do our flight. Next, let's look at the basic flight instruments we absolutely need. Starting here, that's our speedo in kilometres an hour. Here is our VSI that shows whether we are climbing or descending. Helicopter pilots learn to have a third eye to keep an eye on their VSI. We will do that today. Barometric altimeter, pretty sure it's hundreds of metres. Radar altimeter, metres. Here is our hover position indicator, not actually the correct name, but that will do as a translation. And to be honest, as an absolute minimum for VFR flying, I think we can do with that. Next, right control and enter brings up our controls. Now we're not going to go thoroughly into autopilots today, A, because I don't think they're finished, B, because we just don't understand them well enough yet. But our autopilot AFCS channels out of interest are up on the top right there, heading, roll, pitch, and altitude. More importantly, up on the top left here, you're going to see my inputs. It's very hard for me to explain exactly what I'm doing with my stick, rudder and collective, but you can see it here. So, you can see my rudder, left and right. Next, pitch, roll. Currently in the neutral position. Next, collective. It's this bar here. I can snap it up ever so quickly, but I don't want to do any more than that because I will take off. Next, B means parking brake on. If I press parking brake, it comes off. Put it on again. If I press normal brake, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, and then put the parking brake back on. This here is our actual engine throttle, and we're not going to go into that today. We're just going to leave that in the base neutral position. Trimming. So if I move my stick out there, okay, and I press the trimmer button that we saw earlier, and I release my stick, look at that. It stays where it was, even though my stick is actually in the neutral position. If I press trimmer reset, it goes back into the neutral position. That's how a helicopter trimmer works. It is different to an airplane trimmer. Purely for learning interest, we've got our AFCS channels down here. Your uh, roll, pitch, and altitude. You can see that the indicators shown here are up on the top right of the screen in kind of cheat mode. Channels we've got on are pitch and roll. As standard from a hot start, altitude and your are off. Can turn and force them on if we want, but I'm not going to. RC likes to have them on, but that's his bag. I'm keeping mine off, just the two central ones. Last thing regarding controls before we set off is the pedal damper, which is quite important, and I'm going to do my best to explain it. So we've got this switch here. As standard, pedal damper is turned on. It refers to the rudder pedal, and it is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a damper. So watch if I put left pedal in and then let left pedal go. It takes ages to get back. Watch if I turn it off, pedal in, let go, it comes back quickly. Watch that again. Turned on, if I can do it. Let go, comes back slowly. In fact, as well as the return, it's also the speed at which we can push it. So what's happening is, with it on, it's dampening our pedal inputs. That's making it a much smoother ride for our all-important operator in the front there. He does not like a rough ride. The pedal dampers need to be there because stability in this platform is crucial for the operator to fire the ATGMs. If the pilot creates too many Gs, they can throw off the gyroscope and break the uh, sight. Right, literally go and break so it things. it needs to be smooth. Yeah, right. Yeah, so we advise to keep it on. We've heard that it can be useful to have it off when taxiing, although I'm just going to taxi with it on. 
Also, if you want absolute control over the aircraft because, I don't know, you want to do an air show or something and you want to flip it around and go crazy, then you want to take it off. So you get full control of that pedal. For the regime of this flight and what we would consider most military flights, we're going to leave it on. That leaves us ready to taxi. We have, without the brake, three rolling wheels with a cut. Arty, have you crashed? No, I won't ask. I won't ask. Uh, we have three rolling wheels and a non-steerable caster wheel at the front. We will steer by essentially flying the helicopter on the ground. So, I'm going to disengage my parking brake RC and if you want to start taxiing, please. What I'm going to do, valued viewers, is release the brake. With the cyclic in the standard position, it will actually drag the helicopter forward. I will then use rudder pedal to steer. At any point, if I want to go slower, I can just pull uh, the cyclic back. That will tilt the rotors back and pull me back, essentially. Or if I need to stop and hurry, I'll just bung the brake on. Okay, so let's get let's get going. So essentially, it's a bit weird, but I'm using the pitch for my kind of power at the moment. Just how a helicopter works. I see almost fell over. Yeah, Don't is. think we didn't see that. In terms of speed, keep extremely slowly. Otherwise, you'll do a two-wheeler. It's not absolutely not an easy thing. If this is your first helicopter and you're struggling, that is completely normal. Don't worry. Just keep at it. Okay, I need another kind of emergency brake here, so brake on. If you've really got to stop, do that. Note, I'm co constantly correcting and steering with the uh, with the what we're going to call the rudder pedal today. Uh, you'll never stop doing that. Even in flight, you are never really going to stop going left and right with that rudder pedal, so get used to it. Again, it's a bit like flying a warbird, but it's not like flying a jet, so it's very different. Okay, I'm going to de-accelerate now. Make my turn. Careful, so just slow, keep it slow. Don't let it run away from you. And if it ever does run away from you, just bung on your brake. Push and hold. Okay, I am going to put my parking brake and relax. Next, we're going to take off. Then we're going to transition to forward level flight and just have a bit of a buzz around. In terms of what I'm doing with the cyclic and the rudder pedals, just look at the control indicator at the top left. It shows it much better than I could ever explain to you. Once we're bored of flying, we will transition to a hover, which is a very high skill command in a chopper like this. We will then transition to forward flight again, and then we will come in for a vertical landing or a near vertical landing and discuss VRS. RC, are you ready for a very controlled, gentle takeoff? You want to do a rolling takeoff? No, I just want to keep it, I mean, we can, but I just want to keep it super simple and just go straight you up. To, okay, you should trim for a uh, yes, we vertical. Yes, absolutely. So, I'm going to transition to uh, to manual brake, so off parking brake, onto manual brake. I am going to now move my stick uh, cyclic down to about there, you see, aft and right, roughly there, and then press the trim up. That sets takeoff trim in this helicopter because it just needs that bias on the aft and to the right. After a while, you'll just learn to figure out exactly where it is. Okay, I'm going to start pumping up the collective, which is the first time we've done that today. Collective not needed for taxing, or it shouldn't be. Oh, hey, hey! Over we go. Lots of corrections are going to be required because I got the trim a little bit wrong there, but there. Now, eventually you'll get it nice and neutral like I've got it here. Take that chance to trim. So, ping, trim. Now I, I neutralise the stick. You can't see it, but you're going to have to trust me. The stick is now perfectly neutral and, uh, and nice and stable. Constantly on the rudder pedal. Ne rudder pedal never really stops. I'm going left, I'm going right, I'm going left, I'm going right. Feeling where I need to be. We're currently low to the ground. It means we're in something called ground effect. It helps us fly in just about every aspect. Kelsey, can we please slowly and controllably transfer to forward level flight, please? So collective's going to go up, cyclic's going to go forward, and off we go. Now as we do this, our current trim position is going to become invalid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the trim. Whoa, ho, ho, look at that. Take control again. I'm going to start to get a feel for where she wants to be settled. It's about there. I'm going to reapply trim. Trim will reapply, stick neutral. Every time we have a large change in speed of say delta 30 knots, uh, sorry, yeah, that's what knots will do. Um, then we'll need to retrim. I'm feeling like I need to retrim now, so get it nice and neutral. More, a bit more collective, and retrim. Release stick, stick neutral, and she's feeling beautiful. Right, let's take it down to this town and just have a little wiggle around. Nothing crazy, just just some small bank and rolls. If we wanna, if we're moving forward like this, it actually acts a lot like a plane. Look how little rudder I'm having to put in now because it's flying a bit like an aeroplane at the moment, a winged aeroplane. The slower we go, the more rudder we have to, to put in. We also turn like a plane like this. We turn with our roll. I'm putting no rudder to turn, I'm purely rolling. 
again when we get slow it becomes less like a plane more like a helicopter and we have to use our pedal much more we have to use our um a rudder and almost no roll at all okay so expect there to be a massive difference with how she handles flying fast and flying slow if you just take us back to that original position where we were RC what we'll do is show transitioning to a hover which is about the hardest thing you can do along with landing okay so if you want to stop somewhere like we're going to when we enter that town give it imagine it's a bit like an oil tanker give it a good long few hundred meters to slow down slowing down means coming down on the collective and aft on the pitch every few delta 30 knots or so retrim neutralize stick do it again off the collective a bit pitch back a bit retrim neutralize stick so let's start using our flight instruments now very important when we're slowing down to especially look at our vsi just vfr conditions obviously good vfr conditions uh keep an eye on our vsi because we don't want to let that go below about the five because we risk VRS and vortex ring state which we'll talk about soon so I'm still coming back on the collective I'm still coming back on the stick and retrim neutralize stick I've got to start implementing the rudder now because I can no longer roll to turn I now need to rudder keep an eye on the VSI I'm accidentally climbing I put too much power on my bad neutralize VSI now I want another trim, trim, neutralize stick. Okay, so what we're gonna do out here is we're gonna transition to hover now. Now I, with my tiny brain, I'm gonna to struggle to talk through this, so just watch, I think the best thing. Watch my VSI, look at me control where my VSI is, VSI needle along uh, about where the five is. In a very controlled and slow fashion, never drop out of the sky, never drop the collective because you'll never get it back especially if you're heavily laden. Okay, I'm happy that I want to hover about here. So, neutralize the uh, collective, get it in a position where the VSI is neutralized. About there, I'm gonna get the stick feeling where it's happy, and- You just wanna watch your hover indicator. You roger, yeah, uh, I'll come to, uh, I'm gonna uh, trim, neutralize stick. Okay, pretty happy there. Now, I wanna get it, the VSI exactly on the zero. Now, just like RC said, the kind of, it's got a kind of clever ground tracking piece of uh, kit there. I'm just going to pause it here, Arcee. I'll just have to suck it up. This guy here tells me, in relation to the ground, am I actually moving backwards, left, or right, or forwards? It only works in a certain regime of flight. You have to be below a certain altitude, and you have to be below, I think, about 50 kilometers an hour. It's especially useful if I'm picking up some cargo, and I must make sure I come directly down on it. But it can be useful in hover and general landing. What it's saying is I'm going back a bit and a tiny bit to the right. So I need to adjust that with a bit of roll, a bit of rudder, and a bit of uh, pitch stick. At the same time, I'm trying to keep my BSI neutral, and at the same time, I'm constantly balancing my rudder pedal. When I've got the the, uh, the ground tracker level, uh, sorry, static, I'm going to retrim, neutralize stick. Okay, feel quite happy there. Next thing I'm going to do is press the collective brake, which is going to trim, essentially trim my collective in a certain position and hold me in a certain position. Now to do that, I just realized I want to turn on my altitude channel we're not actually sure whether we have to do this or, or not have to do this yet or you not you have to do it okay oh yeah yeah there's there's some yeah well no it doesn't say in the manual so we'll just we're just working it out so i've turned it on anyway i'm now going to press collective brake collective brake pressed it's now going to trim you have to kind of work with it you're working with a relatively old computer at the moment and what you're going to see is that is going to keep me in exactly the same altitude and it's done it pretty well I'm no longer working at all to keep us in the perfect altitude. I still control the other controls. You see I'm slipping left, so I'm gonna go right slightly. I'm slipping forward, so I'm gonna go back slightly. And rudder pedal, I need to adjust slightly, but the computer is keeping me now level, okay? If I want to power through that, I'm gonna put the collective up. I know this isn't the kind of air helicopter that hovers, but I just wanna show you that it's possible. Turn, I'm gonna turn my AFCS channel off for the uh, uh, for the altitude, uh, collective brake is essentially off automatically now. Uh, next, I'm going to come and find RC, and we're going to land on that helipad. Why not? Um, you just go straight in, RC, and I will talk about it as I'm going. I am in the middle of the airfield. Uh, so, valid viewers, the way we approach the hover is essentially how we approach landing here. Um, we're going to go slowly, in control. 
We're going to keep an eye on our VSI, make sure we don't go down below the 5, I think is a good uh, negative VSI reading to ensure that we do not go through VRS. And listen, we're feeling for VRS. VRS is where you get in your own dirty downwash air. If it happens, the plane will just drop out of the sky and you will die immediately. It's a problem in all helicopters, real life and simulators. So the best way to just keep out of it is to control the helicopter and make sure that we don't descend very fast. So look at my rate of descent on my VSI now. It's incredibly low. As long as we can do that, the risk of VRS, which is a real risk, is extremely low. If we're impatient, like me, and I go down here, oh, then the risk of VRS is extremely high, okay? Um, so keep that. Uh, as well as that, just keep everything neutralized. So cyclic, keep it in a nice neutral position. I'm gonna retrim and neutralize the stick. Constantly on the rudder pedal, the rudder pedal will never ever stop. You will constantly be buffeting the rudder pedal left and right. That's a, heli that's a helicopter pilot's job, okay? Otherwise, it is just keeping control of that collective now making sure that we only go down at a meter a second minute whatever is it i don't know uh at a very small uh, uh uh vertical descent rate there we go uh is my gear down yes i actually forgot to put the gear press g for gear up and g for gear down i'm going to park just to show you how we can have good control of this helicopter by a making sure we're fully trimmed b watching the vsi and ensuring that we are only achieving a very low sync rate and c constantly buffeting that rudder pedal look at that rudder pedal it's never stopping if it's stopping then we've probably done something wrong or we've got the water pilot on shows we can control it and keep it just within a few feet now be careful not to hit him here as soon as i do land oh <laughs> as soon as i do that parking parking <laughs> it's a first pass Shut Park, it down. parking brake on what we've shown there is just basic 101 <laughs> helicopter aviation not sure why i'm moving but i am that's because I swung around and smacked you with my tail. Yes, you did. I, I didn't, on its own, I didn't do it. The taxiing is unique to a caster, you know, kind of freewheeling setup. Obviously, you wouldn't get that with skids, but the takeoff is essentially the same. Level flight, transition and turning when moving at speed is basically identical to any helicopter. Approach is pretty much identical to any helicopter as far as I can see. Hover is pretty much identical to any helicopter, except we can engage the AFCS altitude channel and we can use the collective brake. And the landing is, as far as I can see, identical to any helicopter. One thing I did miss out, when landing, if you want to land perfectly vertical, you can use this ground tracker again. Sorry, I don't know the full name of it yet. You can make sure you can come directly down on the spot. And that's simple 101 hind for the time being and until, we've, uh, until we've mastered it. Anything you want to add, RC? Nope. I hope you enjoyed that. Otherwise, see you later.